Yeah, I'm developing what seems to be caries in my teeth. Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and it's been a while since I've been to the dentist. And today's video is kind of a big reminder for me that it's about time that I went. And there's a reason why I'm starting with this. It's because inside my mouth, and your mouth, and actually everyone's mouth, we have a very interesting type of uh, inhabitant living, thriving, and also usually causing a lot of tooth problems, resulting in various cavities, and then also resulting in rotting teeth. And though this doesn't really come as a surprise to most of you, what we're about to discuss today might actually surprise you for a very different reason. What you see behind me is one of many pictures taken of a very interesting phenomenon referred to as a biofilm. Here's actually another example of a biofilm, but this time in a very different environment. This biofilm exists on top of a hot spring. And here's one inside a typical medical tube. And here's an example from the recent paper that we're going to be discussing today. But then, why am I showing you all of this, right? Well, there are a couple of important reasons. First is the new discovery coming from this paper that actually finds something absolutely incredible about these biofilms. But second is the main concept of a biofilm, what it actually represents. Some scientists refer to these biofilms as a kind of a bacterial city. And without exception, they all seem to serve the same purpose for various types of bacteria or even fungi or even a lot of other microorganisms. Biofilms actually start forming a kind of a community that serves as a very effective habitat, protecting a lot of bacteria that would actually perish otherwise. So just for a second, let's go back to our mouse. Even though there's quite a lot of food coming into our mouse, you probably would not want to live here. The conditions are actually quite acidic, there are also quite a lot of different enzymes that tend to break things apart, and overall the environment here is not really the best environment to live in, even for bacteria. As a matter of fact, individual bacteria generally fall apart and break apart pretty quickly. The pH level or the acidity alone is usually enough to break apart most of the bacteria. Yet somehow they survive and somehow they then cause a lot of tooth problems to all of us. But how? How do they manage? Or how do they survive in some of the other inhospitable conditions, such as for example in super acidic, super hot conditions in the hot springs? You can actually see the bacteria right there in orange. There's quite a lot of it all over the place here. Well, it turns out bacteria can create something that's kind of more than just the sum of its parts. They can create a community that we refer to as biofilms. The actual process of the biofilm formation is still not entirely well understood, but it seems to occur in many different bacterial species, many different fungal species, and quite a lot of other species that actually sometimes even combine with one another, with a general representation divided in five stages. First, the individual bacterial species lose some of their properties and somehow attach to the surface, then start to mature and grow in size, and eventually grow in complexity, producing some kind of a defensive shell on the outside, a lot of different structural complexity, and even find a way to successfully replicate on the inside, releasing individuals once in a while. But in many cases, it's not just one type of a bacterium. In many cases, it's actually several bacteria or even several different species, with the species sticking to each other and even resulting in the production of slime in order to then transport various nutrients or even various types of information. As a matter of fact, there's an entire species of organic molecules known as EPS, or extracellular polymeric substances, sometimes known as EPS sugars, whose main purpose is to actually create various structures inside various types of biofilms or various organic matter. And these EPS molecules create everything from the structural protection to various adhesives that allow the biofilm to stick to various surfaces, with all of this becoming more and more complex as more time passes and the biofilm is allowed to grow which is basically what happens with our teeth. But there is something absolutely incredible about these biofilms. These structures only start to form once the individual bacteria start to form these communities, and they actually do have to transform and change on the inside in order for all of this to happen. These cells will become physiologically different from the individual cells and even lose the ability to move around, almost serving like part of the same organism. And as they self-organize into these very complex communities, the, to some extent, start to resemble more complex multicellular life. Which is one of the main reasons why so many biologists would love to learn more about the origin of these particular phenomena, because many scientists today actually believe that there is a direct connection between this and what the bacteria was able to form billions of years ago, and the eventual evolution and production of super complex life on the planet that became more complex with time and started to produce actual structures with individual cells then remaining permanently changed. 
At least that's one of the main explanations for how a complex multicellular life formed on planet Earth. And that's of course why I'm super fascinated with this particular feature of various single cellular life. So for example, if you were to look inside the biofilm, you would actually find all sorts of different extra DNA and protein even floating between different cells. And sometimes this is used for what's known as horizontal gene transfer, essentially for various bacteria to share genes and to, for example, acquire various strengths or various types of antibiotic resistance. But at the same time, the bacteria inside the biofilm can actually even communicate with each other using what's known as quorum sensing. You can read more about this in the link in the description, but in a nutshell, the biofilm itself starts to act as an individual organism and starts to perform various functions. And one of these functions was recently discovered in that new study. The study about the biofilm inside our mouse, the biofilm that appeared to be literally walking or moving around, trying to reach new areas by performing actions that would be completely impossible for individual cells. Or, once again, suggesting that some biofilm changes into a completely different organism once it becomes complex enough. But since this is a dental study, it's basically a research on how we then get various types of caries, all sorts of tooth decay, and all sorts of gum disease. But in this case, this was actually discovered inside the mouth of a child who for some reason had a very unusually aggressive decay and was having way too many tooth problems compared to some of his peers. And so when they took a sample and analyzed it under a microscope, they discovered two species involved in this. This was not just one bacterium, but a community created by at least two species or a fungus or a yeast known as Candida albicans, something that does live in our mouths occasionally, and also a bacterium that generally doesn't move much, known as Streptococcus mutans. The bacterium that we generally associate with tooth decay to begin with. But even though in the past we've seen so many different ways bacteria and fungi or even other species sort of help each other by creating larger communities, in this case, this was a somewhat surprising discovery. First of all, once again, once these species form the biofilm, it actually finds a way to attach to teeth and makes it extremely difficult to remove, even becoming impervious to brushing or to flossing your teeth. As a matter of fact, even using antibiotics or antimicrobial fluids, which can generally get rid of certain bacteria, in this case does nothing. And that's because they actually create a kind of a complex around themselves, using those EPS molecules I previously mentioned, that create a kind of an impenetrable shield around the bacteria and fungi living inside. But even stranger than that, the scientists then discovered that this organism also moves around. The individual fungi, individual bacteria do not move around. But once it becomes a biofilm, it actually starts to create tiny arms that they then use to kind of extend themselves, move around, swim around, and find ways to colonize more of your mouth. In other words, even though the individual fungus and the individual bacteria have no such ability, they don't actually move at all, once they create these communities, they acquire this very strange property. With the animation here showing us a more visual example. For example, this is the fungus just by itself during its initial growth. Whereas here is the community, the actual biofilm, moving around and spreading around. And though naturally they didn't really move very fast or very far, as a matter of fact, this took several hours just to move a few micrometers across. It still was enough to move from one place to another and eventually colonize new areas of the mouth. And so the scientists in this case refer to this as a kind of an inter-kingdom supraorganism. Two different species working together to acquire completely new features to protect themselves and to then spread even farther. But it's obviously unclear if this is more of a collaboration between two species or one species forcing the other to do its job. So kind of like, for example, humans taking horses, domesticating them, and then using them to spread farther and farther. But what is clear is that this is a very efficient strategy that seems to eventually cause a lot of tooth damage if left untreated. But in this particular case, the scientists might have actually figured out where some of these properties are coming from. They do seem to come from some of the genes in the fungi. Although in this case, the scientists did find a trick in order to stop all of this from growing and from developing and from also moving around. They used an antifungal known as nystatin. And by using nystatin, it didn't prevent the growth of biofilm, but it did prevent the spreading of the biofilm further, essentially limiting the infestation to just one location. Nevertheless, though, this unusual property that arises when two organisms come together right now is basically kind of mysterious. Nobody really knows how this works, how this forms, or why these properties emerge producing these unusual leg-like formations or filaments that then allow these bacteria and these fungi to spread, becoming extremely successful and even protecting them from any kind of damage. Something that's not unique to our mouse, of course. So many biofilms exist all over the place, 
and even in other parts of our bodies, and so many of them seem to suggest the same thing. They seem to turn simple single cellular organisms into something extremely complex and allow them to have properties that they would not otherwise have. Emergent properties allow them to be extremely successful in various environments where they would most likely perish otherwise. Helping us explain how life became more complex on the planet and how you and I came to be as well. But that last part about the formation of complexity of life, that's a bit of a speculation. It's really the only explanation we have right now for how some things became more complex and why multicellular organisms evolved to begin with. What is certain though is this. Biofilm is incredible. And it's all over the place, but we know so little about it. As a matter of fact, there's only one other video I have about this topic, you can find this somewhere in the description, because there's just not enough studies trying to understand how this works, or more importantly, what properties the biofilm starts to acquire, and what creates these properties to begin with. At the moment, this is just a big mystery. But it's a mystery that we're going to be exploring more on the channel, because this is a super fascinating topic. As always, check out all of the links in the description below, subscribe, Share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and in this case, biology and formation of life. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t shirt you can find in the description. And stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. And uh, maybe consider going to the dentist, like uh, me. I have to go very soon, but I really don't want to, because as many of you, I just can't stand it. Bye bye.